All right, guys, so I haven't done a video in a few days because we've had rain for pretty much a week, and I think there's still a couple more days coming of it. So it kind of sucks. It's really threw a monkey wrench in the plans. But uh, anyway, I thought I'd give you a little bit of an update. I actually got some stuff done to the car, but, you know, it's not really a whole lot, but thought I'd run through what I'm going to plan on doing and everything. So, And I'll show you what I found. I found a few more bad things, but... And I found some funny things. Here we go. So I have decided to go ahead and take the body off of the frame. And I'm going to go ahead and put it on my body cart. And uh, that way I can go ahead and just roll it right out here into my fenced area. That way the chassis will be here. Uh, and I can work on it uh, at my leisure pretty much. And not have the body in the way of doing everything. If you caught the last video, I'm taking a break on the hard top. Because I have to rebuild another motor for it. And I just don't have the money right now, so I've decided to, you know, take a break from it and work on this. And I'm not going to spend any money on it. I'm just doing fabrication stuff that I don't have to spend any money. So what I've done is I've removed the master cylinder off of it. I removed the steering box. Now, before I removed the steering box, I did an adjustment on it. And I've done a video on this. It's in my playlist, but... Uh, these steering boxes on the top it has a nut it has a set screw uh, for a flat blade screwdriver to go in there and what i did was i loosened the nut off and i ended up turning i always mess with these about a half a turn at a time and it it takes the slack out of it but you know fortunately the the set screw was hanging out of that nut pretty far and i only turned it three quarters of a turn and i got every bit of it out and it still turns very very easily but as soon as i touch it it moves so that is that is awesome but anyway so after i adjusted it then i removed it but you know the steering box it has the shaft in the box coming out so you know your steering wheel goes down there so you pretty much have to take it off to get the body off but anyway i started taking all the body mounts uh bolts out of it there's some some down there i mean this is what original body mounts look like over time one side's like really squished the other side's kind of fat but you know, these things are just pretty much wasted. And fortunately, I have a, uh, a, a new set of energy suspension urethane body mounts to put back on it. Um, if you guys caught the video when I had all the parts laying out here in the yard, or the driveway, I was actually missing two body mounts. And uh, a subscriber stepped up, uh, William, and he actually had spare body mounts, so he sent me two of them. And I thought that was really cool, so appreciate that very, very much. So now I have a full set of urethane body mounts. And uh, anyway, I did have three body mounts break on me. It really kind of sucks. The only ones that are left in the car are the ones in the very rear of the car, the tail pan back here. Uh, these are seized, like I can't even get them to turn. So I put PB Blaster on them and let them set. But there's a bolt going down in here on both sides, and then there's a nut on the bottom. But I was trying to do it by hand and I couldn't get it to budge. And it's pretty much hard to get down in there because this is in the way. So I think I've pretty much decided that uh, I'm just probably going to have to, you know, cut them off there. But I don't think I've ever shown the trunk of this car without all the parts being stashed in it. But this is what the inside of the trunk looks like, which is pretty damn nice. Uh, there, you know, it's, it, it's really clean back here. It, it has surface rust, but there's nothing through. There's not even any heavy craters. So that is very, very cool. Even the spare tire well is nice. It's not cracked back here where the shocks are going through, which I, have, I don't think I've only probably had one or two cars that I've drug in that's had cracks back there. But Anyway, even the tray back here is fantastic shape. So it's going to be a, a wonderful project car. Anyway, I had three body mounts break on me, so that kind of sucks. Those are always a pain in the butt to have to mess with to, to repair them. So I've got that to look forward to, but I can still do it for free, not have to spend any money. It's just labor. But Anyway, so the, the inside of the car is cleaned out. Now what I had done is I cleaned out an area of my shed in my loft, and it's on one side only. And I basically loaded everything in the back of my truck and then drove around behind my house to my shed and put it all up there in the loft. So that's... It's got everything contained on one side of the shed, which is really, really awesome. But anyway, you, there's body mounts under here, and it's like right under this right here. 
there's a brace under there and so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to cut the section out of the floor right here just a square set that aside and I'm going to use an air hammer with the, the you know the flat chisel blade on it and I'm going to knock that uh, nut out of there and I'm just going to weld a new square nut on it I've got to do both sides same same location both sides and then I can lay this back in there and weld it butt weld it back in and grind it and it'll look like it's never been messed with I've had to do this before it, it's not a huge amount of work you know it'll take a couple hours to fix it but the other one that broke off on me was a was a total surprise uh, th these I never had break on me because the threads are exposed sticking up out of there's a square nut right there but that one over there broke on me um, uh, you know when you start taking a body mount bolt out I always do it by hand with a ratchet but when you start taking them out you'll you, you know it'll start turning and then you'll feel it seize up and usually you can run it back in and then run it out and you'll get a little bit more out of it and then you'll have to run it back in run it back out and you'll get a little bit more out of it so I kept doing that over and over and over and finally it just it just snapped off so I'm just going to stick the chisel blade of the air hammer up underneath the edge of that square nut, knock it off there, weld a new one on. So at least that one will be easy to, to get to. But, you know, it could have been worse. They could have all broken off on me. But I'm about tired of this rain, man. It's, uh, it, it's killing me. I just I can't get anything done. But now that everything's out of here, I can show you the, uh, the floors of the car. Of course, back here, this is all great. But uh, I had already taken all the dash parts from behind it out, the firewall pad off, all that stuff. And I went in there and I cleaned all that up, sanded it all down, and then I used POR15 even behind the dash and, and did all that. So all that is pretty much clean up there, but I didn't do this front area uh, because I have to replace somebody's handiwork here. This is some of the stuff that you get into when you drag in an old car. You know, you usually see pretty much everything. And, and I've seen both of these types of repairs before. <clears throat> but anyway, they had this riveted down. This is a piece of galvanized tin. So I drilled all the rivets off, and this is what was under it. Big giant square cut out. I don't know why they bothered cutting it out just to put a patch over the top of it. I would have just left it in there. But uh, anyway, on top of the frame rail right here, they had a 2x4 wedged up underneath the, the floorboards there because the, you know, the floorboards... You know pretty floppy right there but that was their support uh, but it didn't have any kind of hardware in it so i guess there was a rivet or two in there but anyway the the coolest part about this is they actually balanced out this piece of two by four like it is balanced see there are drill marks in there i know terrible joke if you've ever seen a crankshaft or like a harmonic balancer they have drill marks on them do you know to remove material yeah whatever you guys caught the joke maybe Anyway, I'm, I'm still pretty impressed with their uh, shifter mounting deal for their boot, you know. You know, usually when you somebody puts a floor shifter in these cars or change a transmission that's another floor shifter, it, you'll drag these cars in and the holes like half of the trans tunnels cut out because for whatever reason they got to have a drive-through window in there for a little bitty shifter rod to stick out of there. But these guys actually at least spent a little bit of time on here and at least tried to make it decent. Um, I'm going to end up cutting this out uh, wider than that so I don't have to clean all their old roofing tar crap off here. And I'm just going to patch it with another old tranny tunnel I have. But anyway, they had right here, they had a piece of black electrical tape stuck to it, which was pretty ingenious. <laughs> and then over here, this was the boat builder side. And uh, I don't know if they were having a competition that was timed or whatever. There was a guy on this side and a guy on this side. But... Anyway, this was a fiberglass patch, so I ended up getting a flat blade screwdriver underneath neath the sides of this and kind of working on it a little bit, and I actually got it, almost all of it, to come up. Uh, it broke loose over there, but when I was messing with the screwdriver, it is coming up pretty easy, so I'll be able to get the remnants off pretty good. And that floor does have some pretty good rust holes in it. But all I'm going to do, uh, I don't have the money to buy floor pans, and uh, I'm just basically going to go in here where this brace is in here. I'm just going to cut right around it and right up there at the edge of the tow board, right up through here and across and down in here. And I'm just going to replace it with sheet metal and I'm going to roll beads in it and then butt weld it back in there because uh, I, I don't care if it looks absolutely factory or not. Like with this raised square right here and then this sunk in, you know, dimple dyed looking indent, it just doesn't need that stuff. So. This is how uh, 
that's how I'm going to repair it. And then I've got to replace a little area over here as well. That side over there is pretty good, but this one has a pretty good... This is pretty common on a Tri-5. You'll see this a lot. Uh, you'll see that hole right there in the floor. But The back side of the rockers, the rocker panels themselves, the underbody braces, all that stuff is nice. Uh, it was just front floorboard work, some trans tunnel work. I've got to repair a dog leg on the passenger side and the rear. And I think that's pretty much it for the rust on the car. But Anyway, it'll end up being a, a pretty nice uh, car when it's done. You know, getting rid of somebody's handiwork here. But I'll try to cover a lot of this uh, pretty well in case anybody wants to try to, to do it. I'm not saying I'm the leading expert and this is exactly how you have to repair your car. I'm just going to show you how I do it. And if anybody wants to do that, fine by me. But... I just decided to go ahead and pull the body off the frame and get it on a body cart and get it out of the way. And then that way, you know, the, the chassis is, I don't have a body stuck here in the driveway up on blocks and four by fours. So anyway, I'll have plenty of room to get to uh, that chassis. I want to finish my engine mounts. I want to finish my cross member and everything and build the shock bar in the rear. I'm going to clean up the frame really nice and you know, I, I might go ahead and paint it because I'm not going to do what I did to the hard top and make this thing perfect. I'm just going to clean it, paint it, and that's it. All I care is that the grease is off of it and all the heavy rust is off of it. And that's, that's all I really care about. But I got some pretty gnarly spot welds on them motor mounts on the top tube piece. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in there and grind those down a little bit to where they're still connecting. Uh, but I want to get it off there, and then that way uh, I can put a decent stitch on there. But I'm going to end up plating all four sides of that in. So uh, it should be pretty stout at that point. But I still have to do the emergency brake and those two rear body mounts, and at that point the car's ready to come off. So the next video that you guys will see of this car, if I ever get some dry weather, is the body separated from the chassis. But, it, you know, it'll be kind of fun, but... I, I ended up finding some bad, and I knew this was like this. This one coil spring up front has two risers in it. It has one at the back and one at the front that somebody's put in here. Um, I just assumed this coil spring was probably, you know, collapsed or weakened or whatever, and that's why they did that, because it's not on the other side. But I think I figured out what was wrong, because this whole time the car has been full of parts. And when you pull into my driveway and you see the back of this car, it's leaning to the driver's side like an inch. Like it's leaning way over. What I think they were trying to do to correct the lean was that coil spring, which in reality, it's this leaf spring back here. This leaf spring is fried. I almost bet that when I take that leaf spring pack apart, there's going to be a cracked leaf in there. That's what I think. But I have taken these leaves apart on these cars before in the past, and I have re-arched them and uh you know they've worked just fine and then put new shackle bushings and stuff in but this car i don't think these are going to be buildable because the leaves if you can see that are worn into the leaf is worn into it so the long leaf on the top is actually uh, higher than that piece right there and it's the same right there so these leaves are you know they're pretty much ruined now i've had them to where they're not that bad and i've taken a flap disc on a grinder to them and just kind of you know feathered them out a little bit and then put it all back together and the car rode just fine but those are so deep that by the time you did that that leaf spring would be pretty thin and that'd be a pretty good danger but <clears throat> there's another telltale that there you can see daylight through that leaf right there so that is not good and i will say because I've seen this a lot on these old cars when I used to drag these in and just get them running all the time. If you're experiencing a clicking sound and it's coming from the back, it's just like a clicking, click, 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 click while you're driving. You know, you can hear it with a window down or whatever. This is what the problem is. I have seen this a lot where these are uh, flopping around. There's one at the front, there's one at the back. So there is your clicking sound. You can, uh, you know, clamp on some channel locks and really give it a heave ho, you know, squeeze it. Or you can kind of hammer on it a little bit to get it to, you know, quit. But anyway, that is the problem there with those those old leaves when they get wore out. It kind of sucks because I had 
a, a spare set of leaf springs from my hardtop because I replaced those and they laid out here in my backyard and a scrap iron guy came by one day and asked me if I had a scrap iron and I'll let him have them. Had I have kept them, I'd have had leaf springs for this that I could have, you know, redone, re-arched and everything. But every time I give away a part, I end up needing it. That kind of sucks, man. And, you know, if you've ever priced new leaf springs, they're expensive. So that's going to really suck. So when I do clean up the frame and if I just do a quickie, you know, in the yard spray job on it with some paint, I'm not going to paint the leaves. I'm not going to clean them up. I'm not going to mess with them because those are more likely going to have to be replaced. Anyway, that is the plan. Uh, a little bit of uh, body removal and then go in there and I'm going to see if I can borrow my mom and dad's pressure washer to clean the heavy grease off the frame. I'm going to go ahead and do the firewall while I'm at it because that old six cylinder was spraying some oil back here. But I'll go at it with knotted stainless steel cut brushes on my grinder and clean it up real good. And then the areas that I can't get to, I'm going to use my little portable blaster and you know blast it the best I can. But I need to go through all my old paint supplies in there. I've got shelves of old paint. I believe that I have some epoxy primer in there. I think it's really old. I don't even know if it's any good, but I'll just have to see. But you know, I don't care if the quality of the paint on the frame is good it's just i just want it clean and grease free basically is all i want to do but anyway guys that's what's coming so stay tuned and thanks for watching